My name is Lee Rayford. I am an associate professor of African American Studies, um, and I am also affiliated with the program in American Studies and um, the Department of Women and Gender Studies. My research is generally on the subject of race and photography. Um, I recently published a book on um, photography and African American social movements across the 20th century, and I'm really interested in, in sort of the ways in which visual culture um, functions as a social practice, the ways in which we um, uh, can have conversations about and through images. First, when I started looking at the book, I was really struck by um, the beauty of the images in many ways, um, which really what I'm referring to is technical precision, how stable the images are, how they're beautifully framed, the grand scale. Um, and of course it makes sense, right? It's Ansel Adams and he's known for his work on landscapes and um, the kind of beauty of California, the epic um, image, the sublime. But as I really started looking through and kind of going back over the images, I found myself really alienated um, from them in, in, a, in a number of ways. And I think you know, sort of most immediately was that, you know, these images made no space for um, my experience of UC Berkeley, of being in, um, you know, the number one public institution in the world. What I began to see was in these sort of grand, sublime, epic images was a recourse to an Enlightenment vision not only the university is kind of Catholic in its reach and being able to to see all, but with the way in which the photograph, in its focus on a kind of broad perspective, um, as all seeing and therefore all knowing, was part of the kind of crucible, right, <laughs> that imagines white male mastery. Um, over all it surveys. Many of us know where this image was taken from. It's taken from um, the, the Claremont Canyon Trail that runs near the, the Claremont Hotel. The quote from Bishop Berkeley, right? West where the course of empire takes its way. And so this is, you know, the city on a hill looking out through the Golden Gate. Not only it's a broad view, but a kind of more imperial view, right, of empire. So I started to think about what my experience is of the university, how literally how I see it um, and experience it on a regular basis. And, you know, my experience is face-to-face -face contact, right, working with students, having people in my office, um, the conversations in hallways, um, trying to navigate Sproul Plaza at noon, um, on any given, you know, weekday, or mass rallies on campus, right? The multitude. And that is, that's in so many ways completely expunged. It's about people, right? My experience of the university is about people. And when people do appear, those images seem very staged. They're very static and immobile. And, you know, Half Dome doesn't move right? But people are moving and ideas are moving and the way in which the photograph captures something, it's supposed to hold it still. Um, it's really hard to hold something still that's so mer mercurial um, and so much in motion. When I think about photography, I was often taught to, to look at an image and, but to look at it and then try and read it <laughs> with my eyes closed. Right. So you think about what's in it and then all of the things that lie outside of it. How do you take pictures of or understand the university's relationship to the Watts riots? How do you make space for, you know, all of the different folks who bring out bring their soapboxes out, right? Including Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, who formed the Black Panther Party in 1966, and over the course of the next year are selling Mao's Little Red Book on Sproul Plaza. There's no sort of sense either of the influx of people of color, right? students of color at this time. They don't appear 
in here at all. When we see them, they are in um, a subordinate position of, ne again, needing the knowledge. So we've got, you know, the white male student who's teaching, um, who's working with black 2Ts in Watts. The um, white female student at Riverside who is working with her Navajo student. And then another Berkeley white woman who is working with her Mexican 2T in Golden Gate Park. And again, I think the ways in which the images often work to substantiate um, a vision of mastery and to reduce people generally um, to a kind of marginalized position, right? A marginalized place is really being advanced. We forget that the university is about, it is about people and it's supposed to serve the people, right? Um, at least that's what I think I'm doing, right? <laughs> it's part of the reason, that's why, you know, I'm really proud to be in a public institution, but recognizing the power, um, the power of a public school to really, to really create space for um, all kinds of people. And, you know, to, to get students who may have never thought of themselves as scholars or intellectuals to take ownership of the university and the, the sort of grand mastery images <laughs> that are, um, you know, that are centered, that are central to this project, um, you know, really work against that. It, it makes me think about what would, what would the photographs look like? What would, what would my photographs look like? Um, right, so again, me closing my eyes <laughs> and trying to figure out what that would look like. And I think, um, if anything, I would never want to really see above the university. I'd really want to see from within.